What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna create a vanilla Node.js REST API, and it's gonna have full CRUD functionality. We'll be able to create, read, update, and delete from a JSON file. And usually when you see tutorials on Node APIs, you're using Express or maybe some other framework. Usually Express though, that's definitely the most popular. But in this case, we're not gonna use any of that. We're just using bare bones Node with the HTTP module. So it, it's going to be harder to write because we don't have, you know, the additional bells and whistles of a framework like Express. But I think it's a good learning experience. We're going to get into the, you know, the HTTP resp uh, request response cycle, how to structure our code. We'll create a controller and a model to get our products. Um, we'll have to, you know, figure out what route is being hit, what method is being used. We have to do all that manually. So, like I said, it's going to be a bit harder, but it's a good it's a good way to learn kind of what's going on under Express under the hood. All right. So you do need Node installed. Obviously, if you don't have it, go to nodejs.org. And if you're brand new to Node.js, I would suggest watching my crash course before watching this. And also I'll be using Postman to make requests to my API. So if you want to grab that, you can get it from postman.com. All right. And I have Postman open right here. So we can just put our request in and whatever method we want to send. All right. So as far as what I have here, it's just a, a folder called vanilla node rest API. And I have a data folder with a products.json file. So we have five different products in here and each product has an ID, a name, a description and price. And we're going to be able to read and write to this file. Um, you could, of course, use a database, but we're just going to be dealing with the JSON file. So we will be using the file system module that node comes with. All right. So let's start off here by just creating a package.json. So npm init, we can add dash y to just skip the questions. And that gives us a package.json. And the only third party package that I want to use is nodemon. So let's say npm install dash uppercase D for dev dependency and then nodemon. And that'll just allow us to monitor our server JS files so that we don't have to keep restarting the server whenever we make changes. Now we do have to add a script. I'm going to add two here. One's going to be just a standard start script. So if you deploy, this is what you would run. And that's just going to run node and then whatever we call the file, which I'm going to call server JS. And then we're also going to run node mon with the npm run dev command. Okay, so we'll save that. That's all we should have to do here. Close that up and then let's create our server .js, which is basically the entry point for this. And we want to bring in our HTTP module. So we want to require HTTP. This comes with Node.js. This isn't something you have to install or anything like that. This is what Express and all those other frameworks use under the hood. Now, this HTTP object has a method called create server, and this this basically kickstarts everything. We're able to pass a function in here that takes in a request and response. Now, whenever we make a request to our server, we have access to the request and response objects. So we can get some data like we can get the method and the URL and stuff from request. We can respond with certain headers or, you know, whatever we want to put in the body with this res object. Now you have to call dot listen on this and then put in a port. But what I'll usually do is separate this out and create a server variable. And then down here uh, we'll call server dot listen. And then it takes in a port number. So I'm going to create a variable called port and I want to use 5000, but I also want to check to see if there's an environment variable. So process dot env dot port or 5000 and then we'll pass in port. And we can also pass in an arrow function and I'm just going to do a console log with some back ticks and say server running on port and then dollar sign curly brace syntax and we can pass in the port variable. All right. So if I go ahead and, and run this with npm run dev nodemon is going to watch server JS and you can see server running on 5000. If I go over here and I make a request HTTP localhost port 5000 and I send 
it's going to hang. It's not doing anything. So I'm going to cancel this. And that's because we haven't done anything in this function. If I do a console log here of one, two, three, and I send a request, it's still going to hang because I haven't responded with anything. But you'll see it is logging one, two, three down here. And it doesn't matter what the URL is as long as it's localhost 5000. All right. Now, to just show you like a, a generic response here, let's just send an HTML page. So first thing we need is a status code so we can set res status code to whatever we want. I'm not going to go over all the status codes, but basically 200 means everything is okay. That's successful. 201 means something is created and successful. The 300 range is redirects um, 400. So 400 is a bad request. 404 is obviously not found. I'm sure most of you know that one. And then the 500 range uh, are server errors. So we want to set this to 200 and then we want to set whatever content type we're sending back. In this case, it's going to be HTML. So we want to res dot set header because the header is where you put stuff like the content type um, authorization tokens and stuff like that. So we can set the header uh, of content dash type and let's set it to text slash HTML. And then we can send in the body. So res dot right. And in here we can actually put in HTML because I use that content type. So the browser will render it. Uh, we'll just say hello world. And then we need to end the response. So res dot end. Okay, so let's save that. And now if I'm actually going to test this in the browser. Because I just want to show you we can go to HTTP localhost 5000 and it renders our HTML. And if we look in our network tab and I'm just going to reload and click on localhost, you can see the request URL that it was a get request, obviously, because it's the browser status code 200. And if we look at the uh, let's see, I want to show you the content type, which is request uh, response headers. Where is oh, it's right in front of my face. So content type is text HTML. All right. Now we can also get this in Postman. So we, if we want to render the HTML, we can hit preview. But you can see we get 200 response. If we look in the headers, text HTML. So that's kind of like the I guess this the simplest kind of response we can give. Um, And it doesn't matter if we go to like slash whatever slash ABC, it's still going to give us that hello world because we we didn't specify any specific URL or method or anything like that. With Express, you have the luxury of doing like app dot get whoops app dot get or app dot post or something like that. Put a specific URL in and then you have a function. Well, we don't we can't do that because we're not using Express. So we have to kind of manually do that. Um, now, what I want to do here is instead of sending HTML, I want to send our products. Okay, so I'm going to bring in say const products equals require and that's in dot slash data slash products. Now we can actually shorten this up a bit. If you want to send the code and this header, you can actually use write. Uh, you could use write head. So res dot write head and you can pass in a status like 200 and then an object with your header values. So let's do content dash dash type and set that this time I'm going to set it to application slash JSON because we're not sending HTML. We're sending JSON. Now, even though we're bringing in products dot JSON, uh, it's still going to come in as just an array of JavaScript objects. So when we send this back so we can say res dot right and instead of just passing in products by itself, we have to wrap it in JSON dot stringify and then pass in products. Now, you don't have to do this with a framework like Express. It does it for you. But in this case, we do have to. And we can also shorten this. So instead of doing res dot right and then res dot end, 
like that, we can actually just do res.end and pass in our response. So we don't even need res.write. So we can just do that. So that kind of shortened, that shortens things up. Let's save that. I'm going to go back here and send. And now I'm getting all my, my products. Now notice I'm making a get request to slash ABC. It doesn't matter what I put in here, whether it's slash, you know, one, two, three or whatever. I'm still going to get the same response because we didn't specify any conditionals on the URL or even the method. If I do a post request, same thing, no matter what type of request I make, I'm going to get these products. So, oops. So we need to figure out how to kind of, you know, test the, the URL and the method. So in here, let's do an if statement. And this request object, we can get the URL, which is going to give us everything past um, everything past the, the, the host here. So if I do slash API slash products, it's going to give us that slash API product. So let's test and see if that's equal to slash API slash products. And then let's take this here. So we'll take that and move that up into this function here. Not function into this conditional and let's save that. And now if I hit API products, we get this. If I do API posts or something else, anything else, it just hangs. So let's take care of the hanging. So we'll just do else. And I'm going to grab this. And we basically want to want to uh, send back a not found. All right. So not found instead of 200, we're going to do 404 and I'm going to send back Jason, but it's just going to be a message. So I'm just going to say message and we'll say route not found. So now if I go back and I go to API posts, I get route not found. If I go to anything except API products, I'm going to get that. So API products. Good. Now we still have an issue here. If I make a post request, same thing, put requests, same thing. We don't want that. It should only be a get request because get is to do just that, get data from the server. So in addition to testing the URL, let's also say if the request dot method, because that will give us the method. Let's say if that is also or if that is equal to get in addition to this URL then we want to go ahead and send the products. So that works. But if I do a post, then we get route not found. OK, so this is stuff that, you know, Express gives you some really handy tools to, to, to work with. But in this case, we have to do it manually. And it's it's more of a pain in the ass. But, you know, it's a it's a learning experience. And uh, I, I like doing this kind of stuff anyway. So now Let's clean this up a little bit because we're going to have quite a few routes. We're going to be able to it's going to be a CRUD API. So I don't want to put everything inside these ifs. I want to kind of um, separate it out a bit. So we're going to have models and controllers. So let's create a models folder in the root and create a product model .js. And then I'm also going to create a whoops, a, a controllers folder. So controllers and let's create a file called product controller .js. Now, if you're not familiar with the MVC method or MVC design pattern, it's model view controller. We're not dealing with views because this is an API. You could use react or something for the view uh, models deal with databases or I shouldn't say databases data. In this case, we're dealing with a JSON file. So it's this is these functions will strictly be used to either get data or create or update or delete data. Controllers are going to basically, uh, you know, control whatever that particular route is doing, you know, the status it's sending, um, what it's sending back, any headers we want to send, stuff like that. And it's also going to interact with the model. It'll get the data from the model to send back. OK, I hope that makes sense. So let's kind of Let's change this up a little bit. I'm going to take the products that we bring in and cut that and put that into the model. We just need to add dot dot because we're going up out of the models folder. So we'll bring that in and then let's create a function here 
called find. So these are very just, you know, low level functions, I'll say find, create, whatever. And for the models, I'm going to use, I'm going to return a promise. All right, because we're getting data. So uh, I mean, we, we don't technically have to use promises here, but usually when you fetch data from a, either a database or whatever, you return a promise. So we're going to say return new promise. And if you've never done this before, promises take in a function with a resolve and reject. Okay, so when the promise is fulfilled, you can resolve and you can send back data. In this case, this is going to be super easy. We're just going to resolve products. Okay, so we're getting the products from our file here and we're just sending a pro returning a promise with those products. Now we do have to export. So let's say module dot export since we're using this in another file and we're going to export find. Okay, and then in our controller here, that's where we want to do this stuff. So I'm actually going to just cut that and in our controller. Let's first bring in our model. So I'm just going to call it uppercase product, just like you would with something like mongoose and then require dot dot slash model slash product model. And then let's create a function. It's going to be asynchronous because we're going to call our model function, which returns a promise. So async function, we'll call this get products. And these all these controller functions are going to take in a request response. And then I'm going to put everything we do in, inside of a try catch. And if there's any kind of issue here, then we're going to console log the error. All right, but in here, I'm going to paste in what I copied or what I cut from the other file from our server. And we need to fetch our products because right now it doesn't know what this products is. The file was brought into the model, not the controller. So here we'll say const products and we want to use a wait here because remember that find function returns a promise. So we can say from our product model, we want to call dot find. Did I call it? Let's call it find all actually. So find all like that. And then we could say product dot find all. And this is going to be the same. So 200, whatever, um, sending back products, which now is going to come from this function, which ultimately comes from the file. So to use this controller, Let's module dot exports get products and then in our server JS, I'm going to bring in we could say like product controller and then do product controller dot get products, but I'm going to just use destructuring and pull out get products from that from the controller. And then down here we can simply call uh, get products. We just want to pass in request and response, which comes from here. Okay, because if we don't pass that in, then in our controller, we it's not going to know what this is and what this is. So now let's go back to Postman and let's send. Okay, so we got an issue here. Let's see. Uh, get products is not a function. So get products from our controller. And let's go to our controller. Um, oh, this should be module dot exports. All right, let's try that again. OK, so we're getting the same, you know, the same result that we got before, but our little our API here is structured much better. It still shouldn't work if we do like post or anything like that. OK, so now that we have our controller and, and model files created, we can easily add functions. Um, so let's create our next route, which I want to be I want I want to be able to get a specific product by its ID. Now, again, with Express, you could put you could do like slash API slash products slash colon ID and you could access that. Don't type this. I'm just showing you. You could access that with request.params.id, 
which makes it really easy. This would give you whatever's passed in here. We don't we can't do that here. So what we'll do is create another. Uh, let's say else if. Let's move this up here. So else if and instead of saying if the request dot URL is equal to something, I'm going to use dot match and we're going to match a regular expression. Basically, we just want to see if it's if it matches API slash product slash and then a number, then we want to go ahead and, and fire off, you know, whatever we're going to do here. So since we're passing in a regular expression, we need to add in our forward slashes and I want it to be slash API products just like this. So if I take this and I put it in here, any slashes we have to escape with a backslash. So we want to put a backslash here and here and here. And then after this should be another another slash here. And after that, we want to open up some parentheses with some brackets and say zero through nine plus. So it can be, you know, product slash one or it can be product slash 1000. All right. Now we also want to make sure the method. So let's say right here and the request dot method is equal to get. If that happens, then we're going to have a controller called get product or a controller function called get product that will take in request response and ID. Now, how do we get this ID? Because remember, we can't do request.params.id. What I'll do is create a variable called ID, and I'm going to set this to the request.url, which is going to be API products and then some number. And what I'll do is call split, which takes a string and splits it into an array, and I want to split it by the slash. So that way, It'll be like this API slash products slash an ID turns it into an array where this is the zero index. This is the two. This is the three index. So I want to get the three. That's going to give me the ID. All right. And then we'll just pass it in to get product, which we're going to pull from the controller. So right here, I know we haven't created it yet, but we will. So we'll pass in get product. So let's go. I guess we'll yeah, we'll just go into our controller now. And let's actually I'm going to put a comment here and just put the description of this. So this gets all products and then the specific route for this is a get request to API products. Okay? And then I'm going to copy this. And this one is going to be get, let's say, get single product. It's going to look like this, the route. Get product it takes request response, but it also takes in the ID from the URL. And here we're going to say const product singular. And then we'll have a, a method or a function in the model called find by ID. Pass in the ID and we just want to check to see if the product exists. So if the product doesn't exist and then if it does, so I'm going to grab this and put that in here. So if it doesn't exist, I'm going to pass in here a 400, which is a bad request, and then we'll send JSON message and say product not found. Okay, actually, let's this will be a 404, not a 400. And then else, oops, else, then we're going to go ahead and this is fine. We just want to make sure we get rid of that S because we're sending back a single product. All right, and then we need this find by ID. So let's go to our model. Actually, let's make sure we export that before I forget. So get product. And then in the model here, let's copy this 
and let's say find by ID and that takes in an ID and we're going to return a promise, but we need to get a specific product. So what I'll do is set product equal to products, which is our array of products from the file. And let's do dot find. So find we can pass in an arrow function. I'm just going to pass in P. So for each product, I want to get the one where the product ID is equal to the ID that's passed in. And then I want to resolve my promise with that product. Okay, and then we just want to export down here, find product by ID. Or I'm sorry, find by ID. All right. And you could make this into an abstraction, you know, where, you know, it actually doesn't have to be products. It could be whatever, but uh, we're just dealing with products. Well, I don't want to make this too complicated. So I think we should be good. We're bringing in our controller function, get product. We're passing in request response ID. I'm just going to move the controller here. And then in the controller, we're finding by ID with this and checking to see if it's not there. If it's not, we'll send 404. If it is, we'll send the product. Good. All right, so let's try it out. So this should still work. And then if I go to slash one and send, you can see I get a 200 response and I get my single product. If I go to two, I get that product. If I go to 22, I know there's not a 22. I get product not found. Okay, cool. So now we're going to get into kind of the more difficult stuff where we're actually adding data, posting data to the server. Um, so for that, let's see, how do I want to handle this? So let's first of all put the if statement in the route here. Uh, so we have that. So let's put an else if here. And you could definitely improve the, the router here. You could create a router that is much neater than this. But let's say else if the request.url. So this is this is going to be a post request to slash API slash products. So we don't need to do like the match or anything. We can see if it's equal to that. You could do a match as well. Uh, but we want to just check to see if it matches that. And if the request.method is equal to post, this is a post request. Okay. And if it is, then we'll have a, a function called create product. Just pass in our request response. Okay. And then up here, let's bring in from controllers, create product and let's go into our controller and create that. I'm just going to copy. Actually, I'll just copy this one. OK, so this is going to create a product. It's going to be a, a post request. Create product. OK, so this is uh, let's see, this is probably going to be our. One of our longest ones here, so I'm going to get rid of everything in here in the try. And before we actually get body data, because we want to get data from the body, um, you know, sent through through Jason. But before we do that, I just want to show you how we can actually insert something static for now. So I'm going to just create a variable called product, set that to an object and that will have a title. Let's just say test product and a description. This is my product and a price, we'll just say 100. All right, so we have this product. I'm not including the ID because I want that to get automatically inserted like it would in a, in a database. So let's see, we have that product and then 
what we'll do is we'll have a model function called create. So let's say const new product equals our product model dot create. And then we pass in, uh, we want to pass in the product. And then once we do that, we'll go ahead and return res dot end and json dot stringify and I want to pa- I want to return the new product like that. Actually, we need we want to send the status as well. So let's do status and the header, the content type. So let's write head and we'll do a 201 which means created and then content type application slash JSON. Okay, now in our model here, we want to have a create. Now, as far as creating the ID, there's many ways we could generate an ID. I'm actually going to use a, a separate uh, package. I actually forgot about this when I told you Nodemon was the only one I'm using, but it's just a package called UUID. So let's say npm install UUID. just to generate an ID for us and then let's run our server again. And since we're we're constructing this in the model, I'm going to bring it in here. So let's say. Uh, yeah, we'll do const. So the way we can bring in the UUID is we do V4 and this is in the documentation. If you want to check it out, UUID version 4. there's different versions and we want to set that to require and then UUID. So now let's create a, a create function. So I'll just copy this. Okay, so this will be create and we don't need to pass anything in turn a promise. And let's just get rid of this. Whoops. Get rid of that. So we it actually I said this is going to take isn't going to take anything. It's going to take in the product, right? Because in our controller, when we call product dot create. We're passing in this product, which right now is just a static object. Um, but we're going to pass that in. But we need to add an ID to that. So let's say const new product, set that to an object and we want to spread across all the stuff that's in the product that's passed in. So we're just using the spread operator, which will take all the key value fields in this object and spread them across this object. And then we want to just add an ID and get that from UUID V4. That's going to generate a random ID or a unique ID. Okay, so it'll have the ID and then whatever is passed in the title, description and price here. So that's going to put that into the variable. Now we want to take products which is from our file and that includes all the past products. We want to push on to that the new product, right? So that'll push on to that. Now we need to add that to the JSON file, okay? Because I want to actually update the file. So what I'm going to do is create a utility function to write data to to a file. So in the root here, let's create a utils folder and inside utils Uh, actually not a folder. Let's do just a file. So we'll create a file in the root called utils.js. All right. And in this utils file, I'm going to bring in the FS module, which is to deal with the file system. FS. And let's create a function. We'll call this write data to file. And it'll take in a file name and it'll take in the content. And on FS, we have a, a, a method called write file sync. So we're going to just make this easy on ourselves and write this synchronously. Pass in the file name and then the content, although we want to stringify the JSON content. So JSON dot stringify and pass in content. And then we can also pass in, let's put a comma here. We could pass in the encoding, which is going to be UTF-8. And then 
we pass in a function with a possible error. And we'll just check for that error. So if there's an error, then we'll go ahead and console.log error. Okay, and that's it. So we just want to export this. So module.exports. And we want to export write data to file. And then we're going to bring that into our model because that's where we want to use it. So in the model, let's go up to the top here. And let's say const. write what I call it write file to data what I what did I call it write data to file all right write data to file and that's going to come in from our utils which is dot dot slash utils all right so now back down to the create so we have products with our new product push on to it so now let's call write data to file which takes in the file name which is dot slash data slash products dot json and then the content which is going to be products and then we just want to resolve the new product because that's what we want to send back when we call that in our api we want the the new product sent back to us so pass down here create. Okay, so in our controller, so that's going to give us the new product back, it's going to get placed here, and then we're going to respond with it. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Now remember, it's it's not going to have body data yet, I'm not dealing with that just yet, it's just going to be this test product. So we don't even have to send any body data yet. So I'm just going to make a, let's see, just products and a post request and send okay so something went wrong here create product is not a function i must have forgot to bring it no product oh wait a minute um function create product yeah i didn't export it down here create product let me just make sure i brought it into server okay i did all right so let's try that again what's this comma okay let's try it again make sure it's a post request send okay so we got a 201 rec uh, created but we didn't get our new product back so let's check out the json file so it did get added as you can see, we have ID five. That was the last one that was there initially. Then we have this ID, which is a UUID title test product. All right. So that worked. It's not all nice and neat anymore, but it's fine. If we if we make a get request to products, we should see it down at the bottom here. OK, there's our test product. I just don't know why it wasn't sent back to us. So let's see, const new product, pass it in here, and then we resolve the new product. And then in our controller, aha, I didn't await. Returns a promise, so we have to make sure we await. Now you can, if you want to manually go into your products.json and just get rid of the last one here, so you don't have a bunch of these test ones, just make sure you don't delete the bracket. And then we can try this again. So we'll make a post request to API products. And there we go. So now it's getting inserted and it's giving it giving it us back when we make that request. So now we want to work on body data, right? We want to be able to make a post request and send, you know, raw JSON and then send here, you know, a title. Say Brad's product a description and a price. Okay, so we want to be able to send that and, and get that data. So the way that this works is a little confusing and the syntax is 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 not that great, but 
we're, again, we're not using a framework, so we can't just do request.body.title like we can with Express. Uh, so I guess doing it this way really shows you how to appreciate Express and appreciate other frameworks. Um, but what we'll do is uh, we first want to initialize a variable called body. And this is just like straight out of the documentation. So I want to initialize that and then this request object we want to call dot on and we want to say dot on data and then we have an arrow function. Now this arrow function takes in a what's called a chunk. And what we end up with here is a buffer and we need to convert this buffer to a string by saying body, which is just an empty string right now. And then we want to append onto that plus equals chunk dot and then to string. Okay, so we're just taking that buffer in and converting it to a string. Now we also want to go after that request dot on and do another request dot on. And here we're saying on end. So request dot on end, then we want to uh, we'll have a function here and then we have access to body, right? We'll have access to body, which will be, you know, body dot title or whatever. Um, actually, we'll have to parse it to do that because it's going to be just a string, uh, you know, a JSON string. So what we can do is take. Uh, let's see. So we'll take this. Because we can't we can't keep it down here. We have to go within this dot on end and we'll paste that in there. And like I said, we'll have access to body, but I want to parse it. So Jason dot parse body. And let's we can take out from this, let's say const. Because this is now a, J, uh, a JavaScript object, we can destructure and we can take out values. I want to take the title, description and price. Okay, make sure this is in this request dot on end. And then let's see our product is being let's actually take this and put this in here as well. Except we don't want, you know, hard coded values in here. I'm just going to do title description and price because these these are all the same as these so we don't have to do you know title title so it's going to take what we get from the body here the parsed body put it into this object and then we're going to pass that into the model create it's going to create a new product and then we're going to respond with that new product so let's see it looks like we have an issue here okay so await is only valid in an async function. So now, even though this is async, this await right here is actually inside of this function. So we have to label this async. Okay, that's why we're getting that message. Now we should be good. So now let's go ahead and keep this in the body, this title description and price, and I'm going to send and I get back an ID, random ID, Brad's product. So that was now inserted into the data into the JSON file. We can check the JSON file here and you can see that it's been added. All right, cool. So I'm actually going to get rid of it, though. And the test product, I just want the initial data that we had. But that's how we can get data from the body. Now we can make this easier on ourselves because when we do like an update, we also have to do all this right to, to actually get data from the body to update. So let's let's create a utility for this so that we don't have to keep doing that. Um, so I'm going to go right under the write data to file and let's create a function called get post data. And that's going to take in the request. We need to pass that in because we need to call, you know, request dot on data and end. And uh, we'll make this a promise. So return new promise. And that takes in resolve, reject. And I'm going to pass this into a try catch as well. 
And then here, let's say let body equals nothing and then request dot on. Let's say request dot on data. Then we have our chunk. Okay, and then we want to convert that to a string. So body is going we're going to append onto that plus equals chunk dot to string. And then we have our request dot end not end dot on end. And that's going to take a function and then we want to resolve so we can call resolve here the body. All right. And then if there's an error, we'll go ahead and reject and send that error. All right, so that should do it. Let's go ahead and export this. So get post data. And now if we go back to our controller, let's bring in that get post data. So dot 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 slash utils. Right. Where are we controllers? Yeah, so we want to bring in get post data and then to use this let's go down here and it's not going to be as confusing because we had to move everything into this end but since we used a promise and we just resolve the body we should be able to do this a little a little better um, so what I'm going to do is just grab this so the product this right here where we call create and then the response and I'm going to cut that did I cut it I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to get rid of everything else that's in this try. Okay, so we have this a clean slate here and then we can create a variable called body and we should be able to await get post data and we need to pass in request, right? Cuz we can pass in request here and this returns a promise and when it resolves, it resolves the the body data, right? So that's what we're going to get. right here. So what we're going to get from this and we're going to put it in this variable. Then I'll just paste this in. And actually one thing I need to do is get the data from the body. So again, I'm just going to say title description price from json.parse body. And then this all should work just the same. So let's save that. Let's give it a shot. This looks much cleaner now. So let's go over here and I'll just say Brad's product to and send. I get back Brad's product to if I make a get request, I'm just going to open up a new tab here, make a get request to products. And at the bottom here, I should see Brad's product to. Okay, so we can get all all um, products. We can get a single product. We can create a product. All we have left is update and delete. So let's go back to our server JS. And now we want to check for a put request to products and then the ID. So I'm actually going to copy this else if right here. Because this this is the get, you know, where we match to the ID. And I'm going to go under let's see, go right here, paste that in. And so else if is this right? No. Yeah. This is just looking a little weird. All right. So else if this now that's fine. That's going to check to see if it's API products ID, but I want to check to see if it's a put. Okay? And if it's a put, then I want to update, but I do need the ID, so I'm going to do the same thing I did here and get the specific ID. Okay? I'm just splitting the, you know, the API products and the ID and I'm getting the last, I'm putting it into an array, split by the slash and getting the last value, which will be the ID. And then I want to call update product and pass in request response ID. OK, 
Okay, now we haven't created this update product yet, so we'll do that, but let's just bring it in here before I forget and go to our post controller. And we're going to copy the create because it's pretty similar the way that we use the, you know, the get post data. So I'm just going to copy that whole thing, paste that in and say update a product, which is going to be a put request to slash ID. And let's change this to update product. And it's also going to take in an ID. And let's see. So we want to first find the product. So let's say const product equals and we're going to await our product model. And we already have find by D because we want to make sure it exists. And then let's say if the product doesn't exist, then let's actually I'll just copy it from up here. So let's see right here where it doesn't exist. I'm going to just grab that and put that in here and then we'll have an else else. Then I'm going to just copy the rest of this. That's in the try cut that and put that in the else. And let's see, so just move this over. So if the product ex exists, then we're going to get the body post data. Uh, we're going to pull the title description and price out. And then here I'm going to set the title to either the title from the body if it's there or just whatever was there. So product dot title. That way we don't have to send every field. We can just send just the title if we want or just the description or whatever. So oops. so description or the product dot description price is going to be either the price from the body or the product dot price. Okay, and then down here, let's call this UPD product for updated product and set that to await product update. And we want to pass in the ID and the new product from the body. Actually, you know what? Let's not call this. We can't call this product. Let's call this product data. And then here, pass in product data. Okay. And then down here, what we want to respond with is a 200 because a 201 is created. We're updating and we want to respond with that UPD product. All right. Now we need to create the update model function. So let's go into product model. And then from here, let's copy the create. And paste that in. It's going to be update and it's going to take in in addition to product the ID because the product right here is just going to be the title description and price. So the ID will get passed in separately. And then here we're going to say um, let's see. Let's actually let's get rid of this because we need to update one that's already there and then rewrite the file. So let's get the index of the product we need so we can take our products in the JSON file, which are, you know, they come into this file as a JavaScript array and we're going to use find index so we can find the correct index of the product we want to update. This takes in an arrow function. Let's say P and we want the index where the product ID is equal to the ID that's passed in. Okay, and then once we get that index, we'll take the products and that specific index we want to set to have the whatever's passed in here. This is an object with the title description price. We want to spread that across here. We also want to pass in the ID. All right, so we have the ID, the product, then we want to write to the file. So here we're going to pass in, you know, write data to file, pass in products. And then 
resolve. I'm going to resolve the single updated product, which we can get by doing products and then that specific index. All right, so we'll save that. Actually, we have to export update. Let's make sure. So we export update here and in our controller, we need to export update. Uh, update product and then in our server JS calling it here, bringing it in. Good. So let's give it a shot. So we have let's see. Let's do uh, we'll do this this one here. Brad's product too. I'll just grab the ID and throw that in here slash that and then make a put request and then in the body. Let's say body raw. Jason and I just want to change the title. I'll change it to let's say title and I'll change that to updated title and send and let's see what we get back. So we get back the same product, but you can see the title has been updated. Okay, so I don't even have to send description and price if I just want to update that. And if we check the JSON file, just to double check it right here, you can see title is updated title. Awesome. So the last thing we have to do is the delete, which isn't that difficult. So let's go down here and I'm going to once again grab this else if because we need to get the ID. All right. So here we're saying if it matches API products and then an ID, but it's a delete. Then we're going to get the ID and we're going to call a controller called. Let's call it uh, remove product. OK, and that's going to get passed in request response like every other controller function as well as the ID. Let's bring it in up here. Actually, we'll call it delete product. The model function will call remove because you can't use delete as a function name. So delete product. Let's go into our controller and let's copy. Let's copy the get single this right here. So get product. I'm going to copy that and go down to the bottom. Paste that in. So this is going to delete product. It's going to be a delete request to product ID. And this is our controller function, which is called delete product takes in the ID. We're going to look for the product first. If it's not found, we'll send back this product not found. If it is found, then let's call a wait. We don't need to actually capture anything from our model function, but we do need to call await because it's going to be asynchronous product dot remove and then pass in the ID. All right. And then as far as what we want to pass as a response, let's put some JSON in here and just put a message and we'll put some back ticks and we'll say product ID has been or we'll just say product ID removed. All right, and we need to export delete product. And then finally, we have to create this remove model method. So here, uh, let's see, what do we want to copy? It doesn't really matter. I'll just grab this. Okay, so this is going to be remove, and it's only going to take the ID, not a product. And then we want to get. We want to filter out the product with that ID and then just update the file. So I'm going to get rid of these lines and say products equals. Now, since I'm redefining products, I need to actually change this up here to let. Because it won't let me if it's cons and I'm going to just set products directly to products dot filter so we can filter out 
certain products here and I'm going to say for each product and then P so the current product dot ID if it's not equal to the ID that's passed in. So that'll basically filter out whatever one whatever ID is passed in here that we want to remove. Okay, and then we're going to write to the file and just pass in the new products array. And then what we want to resolve here is just nothing. All right, and then we just want to export, remove and we should be good. So let's try it out. Whoops, let's go here. And I'm going to use the same ID. So if I make a get request to this, so we can actually close that up. We get this this object right here with updated title. I'm going to try to delete this now. So if I say delete with this ID and send, I get product and then the ID removed. If I go back to get and I try to get it, it's not found because I just deleted it. If I go to get all products, that shouldn't be here. So you can see that it's been deleted. All right, so we have a full REST API now. We can create, read, update, and delete. We can read all products. We can read a specific product by its ID. So, I mean, it is definitely more work than it would be with Express, but hopefully, you know, you learned a little bit here uh, at the very least. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.